to the 2008 Staff Development Day, our Valentine's Day gift to you, weaving wellness in the workplace. It is our belief that healthy employees and positive work environments lead to more resilience, satisfaction, and productivity. We are delighted that you are able to join us today for an exploration and application of wellness strategy and hope that through this experience, you will gain valuable tips to enhance your well-being. It takes many people to make an event like this a success, and I would like to take a few moments to acknowledge this hardworking team. The Staff Development Day support team from the Department of Training and Organization Development, Terry Werner and Jill Wanek Wardell. <laughs> the Staff Development Committee, Terry Ellsworth, if you will please stand, Andrea DeSantis, Delana Gregg, Tony Jackson, Lynn Kennedy, Teresa Lupinet, Lance Rand, Joe Regeer, Emma Sellers, Allison Rohrbach, and Vicki Simmons. <laughs> Our volunteers, Shobna Aurora, Kim Harris, Pat Jarkowski, Dave Jordan, Pat Patrick Merriman, Steve Slow, Elmer Faulkner, Michelle Kimmery, and Bobby Joe Peach. The Commons Operations Staff, Sedexo Catering, Common Vision, and Facilities Management. Let's give them all a big round of applause. If you have questions throughout the day, there are volunteers here identified as staff on the name badges that can assist you. At this time, I will turn the podium over to the person who had the vision for UMBC to begin a concerted effort to focus on wellness in the workplace, our president, Dr. Freeman A. Rabal. Thank you very much, Dr. Good morning. Good morning. I am delighted to come by and to, to first of all, welcome our, our guest, Lana Warren, and to thank Val and Terry and all the others who've been involved you know, for years, I have watched corporations spend more time and effort and money on ways of helping employees to have healthier lives. And I've seen it over and over again that the healthier people are, the healthier the relationships, the healthier the lifestyles, the more productive they can be, the better they feel about things, the better it is for everybody. And so one of the things I want to do this morning is to tell you about the last few hours for me. Uh, last night, Jack and I went and played tennis and came back and did a little exercising and, and talked. And what we said that was interesting was the reason we have been so fortunate. I, I, I've just had my 37th wedding anniversary. Give me a big hand. Yeah. We said that it had everything to do with friendship and just a healthy relationship. The passion is great, having a wonderful son together, but the friendship, the relationship, the talking, the communicating. And, and what came through was that in our periods of difficulty, because in any relationship, you go through times when you get upset with the next person, right? It's being able to talk about it and to talk it through that makes the difference. Anybody who has a successful friendship, partnership, marriage, or whatever can say that. And, and, and I want to give you that as my gift to you, to think about how to talk through things with different people. When you have concerns, when you have challenges, it makes all the difference in the world. And then this morning, I decided to get up and make my wife breakfast in bed. I was very proud of her. Very proud of her. Very proud of her. And, and uh, healthy breakfast, though. Egg whites, cooked with mushrooms and green peppers, a little shrimp in there with a little salsa, a little cheese, low fat cheese, some rye toast, and some activity. It's always good if you know that activity, right? <laughs> and the point is, she woke up and she said, what is this? And she smelled it and she had a smile on her face. And that was the biggest gift she could give me. All right? Sometimes when you connect with somebody, you just feel good about it. The other thing I did was to call all my girlfriends this morning. <laughs> the average age of my girlfriends is about 92. All right? These are all my mama's friends. 
back in Birmingham. I, I made three calls this morning. They all won, 91, 91, you know, just to tell them happy Valentine's Day on behalf of me and their dead husbands. And, and just a call. <laughs> it's true. And, but just that call made their day. You get my point? They'll tell people all day in Birmingham, Freeman called me today. All right? And what am I saying to you? I'm saying take a moment. There's nothing, to be, nothing more important than first loving oneself, so being healthy, working on your own health, I'm glad that Lana's here to give us some tips and to talk about these to get us started. Number two, to care about other people and let them know you care about them. Nothing is sadder to me than when somebody has a loved one to die and to say, I didn't get a chance to tell them I love them. So the idea of telling people you care about them, friends and family and others, every day makes all the difference in the world. It makes them, everybody needs affirmation, am I right? We all need to feel that somebody cares and when we can congratulate people. And so I'm going to encourage you today to let somebody know you appreciate them, on campus or off campus. Number three, I'm going to ask you help with something. If you look around the room, there's something, there's a pattern here throughout the room. Ninety percent of you belong to one category. What group is that? Women. And I'm delighted you're here. But guess who dies first all the time? <laughs> <laughs> all the men died on my street. My daddy and everybody died 20 years before their wives, all right? What I'm saying is we need to encourage more men to get involved in these kinds of things from all over the campus, because we, men tend to hold things in. You know that, right? And we need to work on those relationships. The other thing I want to say to you is I really want you to think about being ambassadors. My vision is that we become a campus where we let people know we care by giving them support to take care of themselves. Exercise and healthy eating. There's good fruit over there. Eat some of that fruit over there. It's good for you. Crunchy stuff is good, all right? But, but, but the other part is half of Americans are overweight. Half. So it's just what we do, all right? So I want you to think about how to take care of yourself, how to feel better about yourself, how to get the exercise, and most important, how to take the time for yourself. 40% of Americans say they don't have the time for physical activity. I'm saying to you, if you get sick, you have the time for anything, don't you? Everybody thinks they're busy until they get sick and they have to be in the hospital or be on, in the bed, right? And so that's not to frighten you, it is to say that the better you take care of yourself now, the more you love yourself and taking care of it, exercise and looking at how you stop smoking and looking at ways of supporting each other and having healthier relationships on the campus, the better you'll feel about this place, yourself, and your life. And so at age 57, I can say, I have never felt more blessed than I do right now. With a wonderful family, a wife who supports me, friends like you, colleagues, a place where we know that this V-Day thing, you know, the idea of Valentine's is kind of symbolic of people caring about people. you got people on this campus that you know care about you and whom you care about. And when you can be in a place where people care about each other, it doesn't get any better than that. So help us to be better by doing everything you need to do for yourself. Thank you and have a nice Valentine's Day. to introduce to you our keynote speaker, Dr. Lana Warren. <laughs> Dr. Warren is pre presently the Vice President of Clinical Programs at the Kennedy Krieger Institute in Baltimore and is the past director of the Graduate Program in Applied Healing Arts at Tysophia Institute in Long. Dr. Warren's current foci are promoting a healing environment within the workplace and, comp and complementary and alternative medicine. She has recently co-authored a paper toward an optimal healing environment in pediatric rehabilitation, which was published in the Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine. Dr. Warren is one of Ty Sophia's faculty who worked with the University of Pennsylvania Medical School to develop a complementary medicine component to their curriculum. Dr. Warren has initiated many healing practices at Kennedy Krieger Institute, including a training session on languages and healing relationships for over 400 employees. Please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker, Dr. Lana Warren. Day. Happy Valentine's Day. And 
And uh, wow, what a great um, introduction and welcome you got from your president. And to have a president that's so supportive of wellness in the workplace. I, you know, it's really wonderful to come to uh, this particular campus because you have so many things already in place that promote wellness. Um, I look at the, all the offerings on the table in the back. And I'd also like to bring your attention to the fact that you work on a campus. You know, many of us work in the city in a building and we are surrounded by cement. And uh, you know, we are looking for any blade of grass that we might find. And you guys have a fabulous, um, you know, campus that you can walk around. So um, as, as we're talking today, uh, think about the many things that you already have in place to support um, wellness programs. What I'd like you to do first is um, just sit up in your seat and take two or three breaths and let go what happened this morning. Did you have any you know, little struggles getting kids out of the house or traffic was a little bad or whatever? Just let it go. I'd also like you to let go about thinking about what you've got to do tomorrow because you're here. And, um, you know, and if you had trouble getting into work yesterday and your day was a little shorter and you've got even more anxiety, let it go. Today is a gift to you from UMBC about wellness and take it in. Don't let your mind keep wandering off to all those things that you've got to do. So be present, enjoy the day, and make the most of it. What I'd like to um, accomplish today is just give you a little bit of an overview of wellness initiatives that are in the workplace. But I'm going to really focus on what you can do to design your own initiatives in the workplace. And, you know, if, if you look at, you know, we all know wellness is important. You can't help but know that. Um, every place you go, you pick up the paper, you turn on the TV, they're telling you something about exercising and how you eat and whatever. Uh, the Surgeon General's been talking to us, the Center for Disease Control. The Department of Health and Her Human Services has a program called Healthy Workforce uh, 210 uh, that's working on overall quality of health and health disparities. So we know it. But how do we translate it into being healthy ourselves? How do we translate it when we're confronted with a busy schedule and it's easier to stop and get some fast food and maybe some unhealthy fast food than to get something healthy? You know, so how do we translate that into our own personal lives? Because as a nation, we have a long way to go before we are, can, can be really considered as a healthy nation. What I'd like to do first is talk about how much time we're at work. So if we're at the workplace 40 hours each week for 40 weeks each year, now this doesn't count getting ready, driving, going home, which probably adds another 25% to these numbers, but we'll be at work for 1920 hours each year. In a given seven day week, 36% of our waking hours are at the workplace. And if we begin work at age 21 and then work until we're 66, we'll work 86,400 hours. All right? It's a lot of hours. So, um, you know, and it's not like you go home and it's like there's nothing to do, you know, and you can just, you know, sit back and relax and have a wonderful time. Um, because many of us are in the sandwich generation. And, you know, we go home to other obligations and commitments. Many of us have kids. Many of us have aging parents. And, you know, oftentimes, you know, we're dealing with those folks before we come to work. We're dealing with them when we go home from work. So where do we fit in? our exercise and our, our own personal wellness program. And I say, you know, considering the amount of time that we're at the workplace and all these other obligations, weaving wellness into the workplace simply makes good sense. 
just going to give you a little story about something in my own life. Uh, last July, I made a commitment to my daughter that I would drive her uh, to a hairdressing school and high school this year. And it means um, six days a week. I leave my house at 6.30 in the morning, and I get home at 7, six days a week. And right after that time, my mother, 87 years old, wonderful health, broke her hip, and she now lives with me. So since July until now, and it's actually until February 26th, I could tell you the number of hours, <laughs> I've been driving six or 700 miles a week, getting up at 6.30, getting home at seven, six days a week, and you know, I can't swim anymore at 5.30 like I used to. So I haven't been swimming during that time. And I, my daughter was actually sick last Saturday and I got to swim and it was so heavenly. I forgot what a buzz it gave me to go swimming. And she gets her driver's license, God willing, and please all send positive vibes on February 26th to my daughter because she's ready. And my life will change drastically and I'll start swimming again. But for that period of time, you know, weaving wellness into the workplace, weaving my exercise into the workplace was incredibly important. I've become a stair climber, which I'll tell you more about later. Um, you know, and these things happen in our lives periodically that we make choices. And would I make this choice again all over? Absolutely. It was the right decision for my daughter. And I'll be so happy on the 26th. <laughs> So, um, <coughs> I'd like to just tell you a little bit about existing wellness programs and what we know about them. Well-designed wellness programs in the workplace make good sense not only for employees but also for employers. It can impact on decreased absenteeism and improved productivity. Research has shown that in well-designed programs, and we'll talk about what that means in a minute, um, a dollar investment can result in a $5 savings on um, absenteeism, productivity. Uh, so it's a good investment. It also can result in decreased medical costs of having a uh, active wellness program. And again, the savings on that in the literature indicates that a dollar investment yields a $4 savings. It can improve on job satisfaction. It can result in lower staff turnover. We also know that educational programs alone are typically not enough to create change. Again, we're bombarded with education about wellness. It doesn't mean that we incorporate it into our lives. So, you know, it needs more than the talk part. Um, we also know that when programs are over, people need, tend to regress to old behaviors. Um, you know, so weight loss is a perfect example. You know, I myself is one, one of those people whose weight goes, you know, like this. And, um, I was actually in a three-year weight, uh, weight uh, loss and maintenance study, and during the time I was in that study for those three years, I did great. And the study came, you know, ended, and I had a little slippage. You know, so the idea is building up a support system um, so that you sustain the changes that you make. And so if you participate in a program, you know, as you begin it, think about how are you going to sustain it. We're talking about lifelong changes here that we all need to make. Um, we also know that grassroots employee initiatives can be very, very effective. Um, we at, at Kennedy Krieger have a wellness program that has been uh, purchased by our human resources department and have classes that are offering, and we're doing some offerings in yoga and Pilates and other things. And we've got some grassroots groups of people that are really passionate about this, who are coming up with all kinds of fabulous ideas, and I'll share, you, share with you some of them. And on my floor, uh, I work on the sixth floor, 
um, in our building, and you know, I've made a commitment that I'm not going to take the elevator. And I get harassed when I, you know, go stand by the elevator. And I now feel quite guilty when I stand by the elevator. Um, but it's getting that, you know, juice pumped up in, in the colleagues around you that make all the difference. So think about that today. You know, who can be your support team? The National, uh, or the American Psychological Association, on an annual basis gives an award for the Nationally Psychologically Healthy Workplace Workspace Award. And in um, 2007, they um, gave out six awards. And when they looked at um, stress levels in those six companies compared to the national average, you can see the dramatic difference, that 90% of employees in those companies reported work stress compared to the national figure of 33%. Also, turnover, which is very, very costly, um, was at a level of 14% um, with these six companies compared to a national uh, average reported by the U.S. Department of Labor of 40%. Now, let's talk about health factors that we have some control over. Uh, you know, we as individuals, you know, make choices every day, every second. You made choices this morning. Muffin, fruit. Muffin and fruit. Granola, you know, you made some choices about that. You know, juice, coffee. And all throughout our day, we are at a choice point and it's our decision. Okay, so some of the things you want to think about. Um, you know, diet and nutrition, we hear about all the time. And all of us have a pretty good idea um, you know, of what's healthy, what's not healthy. Healthy weight. It's estimated that 66% of U.S. adults are overweight or obese. Um, and it's also estimated that there are 300,000 annual deaths that are weight related. Exercise. It's estimated that 40% of adults have no physical leisure activity and that 30% average uh, uh, engage in uh, regular activity. Um, getting adequate sleep, you know, so getting seven, eight hours of sleep at night instead of five or six. Smoking, illicit drug use, alcohol abuse. Stress level, uh, this is really an interesting one and um, kind of goes with the next thing of, of civility. Uh, again, as you saw earlier, 33% of employees report that they have uh, stress-related um, tension on the job. And um, PM Forney is uh, actually a Baltimore guy, and um, he's written uh, a book about civility. And there are, I think, uh, 24 principles of um, Civility, and he's actually at, at Hopkins. Uh, and actually, he's a really interesting guy. He's a, he teaches um, Italian literature uh, from the like 1500th century or something. And he said, you know, I decided I wanted to read a, uh, to write a book that more than 15 people would uh, read um, because he's in such a little niche uh, niche area. Um, but anyway, in in some of his work. He, he finds that 80% of Americans report that uh, civility is a problem in the workplace. Um, and 60% of people surveyed reported that they experience rudeness in the workplace. And what's so interesting about that, so 60% of people say they experience rudeness. On the other hand, when people are surveyed, 90 to 95 percent of people say that they are not rude. There's a little mismatch here. And um, you know, when I am working and, and doing some workshops with small groups of people, an activity that I do is I have two people walk by each other and one person says hi and the other person ignores them. And every group that I've been in, and maybe you're different, people say it happens all the time. 
And so we're going to talk about um, that a little bit. And as uh, Dr. Rabowski, you know, so eloquently um, uh, talked about, you know, the importance of relationships and being, you know, what comes out of your mouth. And, um, you know, be there, engage with other people and engage in them with them in a positive, helpful um, way. And when you've got differences, uh, sit down and talk about them. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Um, another thing, safety risk taking. You know, are you a risk taker? When we're risk takers, you know, that can increase our possibility that, um, you know, we might bump up with some, uh, some concerns. And having a primary physician. And just real briefly, some common diseases that may be impacted by our personal health choices. And again, none of these are, are um, surprises. And some leading causes of US, U.S. deaths uh, for the Center uh, from Disease Control. And again, um, you know, some of these diseases that are up here, the leading causes of death, uh, you know, are things that we could contribute to them not occurring. Uh, not saying that there aren't other factors involved, but uh, we also can be a part in, in decreasing these numbers. And we spend a pack load of money on health care. Uh, $1.9 trillion in 2004, and uh, it's 16% of our gross domestic product, which is, um, which is high, and high compared to other, other uh, countries. So, let's talk a little bit about what we can do personally. So, already mentioned uh, uh, that, you know, one of the most common uh, things that, are, that occur in the workplace uh, our educational offerings. Um, and these can come in a wide uh, variety of ranges. Um, and, you know, what can go with them that is actual classes and programs. So not only do you know that yoga is wonderful for you and it's wonderful to exercise, but that there are some class offerings that are convenient for you to take. Some places uh, might do these for a fee, some might do them uh, without a fee. And uh, what you find in, in different organizations varies tremendously. But there's a, there's a plan to do something active um, with what you're teaching and, and uh, doing educational offerings with your uh, staff, with your employees. Weight loss and healthy eating programs uh, are very common in the workplace. And again, you know, what's so important though is the sustaining part. And, uh, you know, right now at uh, Kennedy Krieger, we're talking about having a Biggest Loser um, contest. And, you know, but what I brought into the discussion was, but it's not about losing 30 pounds. It's that a year from now, those 30 pounds are still off. And so we're building in a sustaining, um, you know, element into that. And there are organizations that, uh, and you've seen this in the media, where there's consideration that it, you know, if you are obese, that that could affect how much you pay in terms of your health benefits. Um, smoking cessation programs. And, uh, you know, again, these could be sponsored by uh, your employer. Um, it may be that uh, your employer would reimburse you or partially reimburse you for partaking in some of these programs. And know that there's a whole lot of different kinds of smoking cessation programs. Um, and, you know, explore options if, if this is something that, that you're um, interested in. And also find out, you know, are there programs available on campus? Availability of drinking water. Now, this might sound silly, but you know, for example, in, can in uh, vending machines, you know, do they just, are they filled with, um, all filled with soda or, you know, is there water too? And oftentimes I've been at places where there is water, but there's not enough water slots and the water seems to go first. And so then you get with your vending people and say, we need more slots with water. Family friendly. You know, do we offer classes, are classes offered that support parenting skills, that, uh, you know, talk about um, 
using seat belts and uh, car seat safety and how to uh, purchase a car seat and you know features to look for. So, um, and some organizations have daycare um, available on site. Um, what we do at, at Kennedy Krieger because we felt that if we had a daycare on site, it would only serve so few people that we actually give a cash uh, reimbursement on an annual uh, basis uh, to employees that uh, you know regularly use daycare, so that everybody um, can take advantage of that and not just um, uh, you know the few that can afford to go to the the um, facility daycare. Healthy food choices, in vending machines, food service at meetings and conferences. You know, and I look at today that you had a choice. Um, that there were very, you know, healthy offerings and there were some that, you know, aren't as high up on the list, but you had a choice. And I think that's, that's important. And so look at, you know, what kinds of, um, what kinds of foods are you offering to, um, you know, to people when they come to the university? And, you know, what are the food offerings in, in your different food sites around the university? And are they, you know, amply, um, is, is healthy food amply available? You know, what we do at, at Kennedy, um, we, have, um, we have some kind of employee activity, activity every month. And um, so on, you know, it might be as simple on, on Valentine's Day that we would give people something at the door. And what we've gone to now is like we would have both apples and cupcakes um, available and people could choose. And interestingly, what we find is they take both. Um, but, you know, the idea is that, um, healthcare benefit package, you know, what kind of a healthcare benefit package does, you know, uh, different um, employers offer? You know, does it include flu shots? Does it include screenings, mammograms, et cetera? Health club discounts. Um, many organizations uh, might offer health uh, discounts to health clubs, or you know, a place like this. You've got some uh, facilities on campus that you're able to um, able to use and access. Ten minute seated massage, and this is an interesting one. Um, we what we do is uh, we have an inpatient unit, a small inpatient unit. And uh, once a week, we offer 10-minute seated massage to our inpatient families and our inpatient staff. And boy, is that ever a winner. Um, you know, everybody loves it. And I had, you know, this one mom, uh, you know, she talks about it for three or four days ahead of time, and then she glows about it for the next few days. So 10 minutes in a whole week, you know, she's happy. You know, 10 minutes. And there's this one grandma that was on our unit who was there with her grandson. And she came up to me and she said, you know what? After my seated massage, bowled my best game ever. <laughs> so, um, and we have periodically, uh, like for a physical therapy month, we'll bring in a, um, somebody that does seated massage for all the physical therapists to say, you know, thank you. So that can be a wonderful, um, uh, activity. Walking, and again, you guys are in the perfect place. You know, you can walk till your heart's out. And um, there was just a huge front page story in the Baltimore Sun about a 10,000 steps program, which is about five miles, and that is, um, you know, a recommended, you know, amount of, of walking that would be good for all of us to do on a daily basis. So get a pedometer and um, get going. Stairways to Health, and this is a, a CDC uh, initiative, and what CDC did is they um, carpeted their steps, they painted their steps lovely colors, they put up artwork and motivational signs, and they put up music uh, in the elevators, or in the stairwells, and they put signs by the uh, elevators that said, hey, you know what, there's, there's stairways over there. And, uh, you know, you can also say by the elevators, you know, if you're only going up, um, you know, no more than uh, one to two flights, we as an organization recommend 
you take the steps. Um, and then they also put a little uh, thing in there that counted how many people were, were using the steps. Now we're actually embarking on that now. We've got, our, our steps are in, in our trial building, are very pretty. Uh, and we've got good lighting. And uh, we're now going the next steps of, of carpeting and music. And a couple of things, you've got to make sure what the, the, the code is, life safety code, and what you can really do. Um, and, uh, you know, so yesterday I was working on a grant and I was really focusing and our facilities guys goes up to me and said, hey, Lana, we're going to put the radio in your office for you to control about the music in the, um, in the stairwells? And I don't think so. Um, you know, but, you know, you've got to figure those things out. But again, the stairwells, they're there. They're there for all of us. And um, have some fun. And I've made a commitment that I, I'm on the sixth floor. And um, I have two, two plot, uh, flights of stairs in our parking garage, and I've got six flights of stairs in our building to go up to my office. And people around me now know that I've made a commitment to use the stairs and not the elevator. And um, I get harassed. And uh, you know, that's good, because it's you know, keeping, me, keeping me healthier. Um, Creating your own healing space. And uh, what I did um, on my office, right by my door, on my desk, is I've got a little Zen garden and I've got a few little healing kinds of things. And what's so interesting is people come and rake in my Zen garden and start chatting. You know, and it kind of calms them down. Mm -hmm. And you know, and that's kind of my place to kind of look at when I've got a zillion things going on and I'm feeling stressed. Just kind of look over there at my little healing space. It makes me feel better. It kind of calms me down. Yeah, civility um, in the workplace. And to give you an idea of some of the ones listed in his book, it's a little book, it's a quick read, um, is pay attention, acknowledge others, speak kindly, respect other op uh, others' opinions. And it's either 25 or 24. Um, that he has, and he's also a frequent speaker on NPR, PM40. And um, what we've done at, at Kennedy, and we're about to kick off, is we, uh, we're, we're well aware of how important it is to sustain things. And we have uh, come up with these behaviors, um, and obviously we're doing it on the B theme, and um, so we have one, and we're going to do a behavior every month. And at the end of 12 months, people will get a card, a laminated card of all of those um, different behaviors. And then we're going to keep doing them every year. And we have um, institute-sponsored contests um, and activities each month about that um, behavior. And so one of our behaviors is uh, be healthy. And during that time, we're going to have walks, and we're going to have people keep track of how many you know, times they do the steps, and there will be some contests about that. Uh, we have another month that's be acknowledging and you know, telling people, you know, hey, uh, what you do, did to me today um, at work really mattered. It really helped me out. Um, we have another one of being aware of how you show up. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute, but we, it's a choice of how we show up. But it, again, what we're doing is we're doing them once a month and every year because we know people need to be reminded. Um, what also happens is it, you, you want to get a common language going. When people are oriented at our workplace, um, I talk to them during orientation, and I, I talk about this, no, this notion of you know, how you show up. It matters. And um, that as they walk into Kennedy in the morning, as soon as they open that door, I wanted to let go of whatever happened before they started and to kind of wake up to be there in a helpful, kind way to our, our children and our families and to each other. And that it creates ripples. You know, when you go and are greeted by somebody that's smiling and happy, you feel kind of smiling and happy. When you go and are greeted with someone who's an old crab and grump, you know, it kind of makes you feel kind of crabby and grumpy. And so we talk about the kind of ripples that we create in the workplace. 
And we can say to one another, you know, you're showing up in a way that's kind of made the office all tense today. And, you know, what's going on? You know, can I, can I help? But to, you know, talk about it, you know, not just going into an office where everybody's crabby and, and then you get into that same crabby mode, but do something about it and talk about, you know, what you're sending out has kind of filtered through the whole office and it's not making any of us productive or having a good day. So kind of take in charge. So, and this kind of goes right into what I want to talk about is, and uh, uh, what Dr. Grabowski also was talking about is, you know, relationships and, you know, what you say, what comes out of your mouth is so very important. So, and, and I just talked about this, but this ripple thing, uh, and remembering it is a choice. And just to give you a visual, think about you go into an elevator and everybody's like this, nobody's saying a word. And oftentimes you get into an elevator, you kind of don't say a word either, and then you, you know you get off. Um, there's this one woman uh, who just retired at Kennedy that if you got in the elevator with her, I don't think you could have a bad day. Uh, because she would always go, oh, good morning, isn't it a wonderful day? And you know, and the elevator was just always light and bubbly when she was in it. She was a change agent. And each and every one of you, with absolutely every interaction, you can be a change agent. You can change things, you're powerful people. And you know, and think about today, you know, you've got so many possibilities of hooking up and, and linking with people maybe that you don't get to talk with very much. And take advantage of it and see what happens. Much of the upset in our lives is optional. And there's a wonderful quote I like from, from um, Mark Twain that he says, you know, I've had a lot of problems in my life, and about half of them never happened. <laughs> you know? And you know, think about, and I think this is just a great example, you drive to work, or you drive someplace, and you're driving along, and some guy you never met before cuts you off. And, you know, you can choose to get furious about that. You know, you grab hold of the steering wheel really tight, and you go, that jerk, you know, I wish I could smash him too. You know, and you're just furious, and you get to work, and you're still ticked because that guy cut you off. Well, you know, come on, you've never met that guy before, and you're going to let him ruin your day? You know, so when you're in those situations, you find yourself getting all tense and, and, and tight, you know, think about, What's going on here, folks? I look like I'm a little upset. And think about, can you do something about it, or do you want to let it go? And you know, in that situation, here's this person. He's never, you, you never met him before, and you know, there isn't anything you can do. Let it go. You know, let it go, and go back to you know, listen to your music and drive back down to work. You know, and you can also make up a story and say. I bet you that, that guy was going to be late for, it, for, for the airport and it was going to miss, a, miss, miss his plane or I bet his wife was pregnant and he was trying to get to the hospital before the baby was born. You can let it go that way too if you need to. But just think about when you find yourself all tense, think about, you know, can I take some effective action and deal with this? And if not, let it go and be on with a happy day. Viewing every interaction as a new possibility. You know, and a lot of us carry old stories around with people. You know, we see somebody and we think, oh, here comes old Sally down the hall. Don't want to talk with her. Well, why don't you let your stories go and just say, there's Sally. Have a fresh start and see what happens. And also realize that, again, it's really every interaction is open to possibility. <clears throat> what I love most doing at Kennedy is wandering the halls. And I learn so much, and things come up that I never you know, know about. Uh, I was, I'm writing a grant right now about autism, and I bumped into somebody in the bathroom who knows a whole lot about what I was doing. We had a fabulous discussion. And if I hadn't talked to him, well, it was right outside the bathroom. <laughs> uh, 
You know, that wouldn't have happened. So. And look at this, you know, if you think of, and I ask you, you know, just in your mind for a second, think of all the things that you've got in your head that you have to do or that you should do. Got a pretty healthy list? Probably we all do. But think about switching that language to choose to. You know, because even you say, well, how can I, I don't choose to go to work. Well, I think you probably choose to go to work so that you can have a home, feed your family, and have the lifestyle that you want. So really, you know, nobody's got a sledgehammer over us. And our shoulds and our haves, too, are really choices. And think about substituting that. I choose to, you know, I choose to do the dishes at night because I hate to wake up in the morning to dirty dishes in the sink. It's a choice. If I could tolerate them, I might try that. I can't. You know, but it's a choice. And knowing that I choose to do the dishes is a different mind frame than, oh, i got to go and do the dishes. Another word that I just ask you to think about is the word but. So often we say, well, I could exercise tonight, but. You know, and it just kind of kills everything that came before that. You know, I had a great time today, but. You know, that one speaker in the morning was terrible. <laughs> um, you know, so think about if you are always a but person, you know, that just kind of kills part of what you're saying. And substitute and. I had a great time today, and that first speaker was a little on the edge. You know, a different flavor than but. That's okay. This last one, again, um, we had such a wonderful introduction to this um, with your president's <coughs> offering. Be a gift giver. You know, all of us are hungry to be acknowledged. I don't think there's one person in the room that would raise their hand and say, you know, I am sick and tired of being acknowledged. <laughs> Every time I turn around, somebody's telling me something wonderful about myself. It doesn't happen. <laughs> Be a gift giver. Tell your colleague, you know, when you helped me out yesterday with the Xeroxing, when I was going crazy, that made a difference. And I know that I can always count on you. And be specific about what it is that they did that made a difference. So what I'd like you to do, at least in your head, make a commitment to give two gifts in the next 24 hours and think about who am I going to give them to? What are they? And when am I going to do it? And I love what Dr. Robosky said about the 92-year-olds that he was uh, calling up, his mother's friends. Um, because, you know, so often, you know, uh, the elderly especially, they love communication. It doesn't take long to make that call and just say, I was thinking about you and wanted to say hello. You don't have to be on the phone for 30 minutes. You've all got time for that one minute phone call. And let me tell you, it'll matter. It'll matter so much to those people. So I want you to all think about being a gift giver. Within the next 24 hours, okay? Two. Okay. You'll, you'll, you'll like. Okay. This is a handout that you've got in your packet. <coughs> And again, what I alluded to, um, you know, earlier, that we make choices all day long about that are, you know, support healthiness and doesn't support so much healthiness. And, you know, just be aware of these things. Um, you know, and again, you know, if you're on the 10th floor of the, you know, place, oh, well, I can't take the elevator. I mean, I can't take the stairs. I die. You know, we'll take them two flights up and, you know, work your way up to maybe five or, you know, maybe or whatever. You know, but think about in, um, you know, what you can do to go, you know, part of the way. 
And, you know, if you're going to do healthy eating, it doesn't have to mean that you'd be perfect. But maybe you, you know, pack your lunch and pack a healthy lunch more often than, you know, go get something that, that tends to not be so um, healthy. Um, so, you know, take a look at this and, uh, you know, just realize that every day you're making choices throughout the day that affect your well-being and your health. Here's another little um, <coughs> example. And, you know, if you look at the current activity that you're doing, um, look at how you can juice it up and be creative with this activity. And so the example here is walking. And I put six characteristics down on the side of breath, movement, playfulness, language thoughts, interconnectedness, and mindfulness. And, um, you know, so these are just some things that you can look at with activities that you're doing and do them in a little bit different, more creative way. Uh, for example, um, one of the things I like to do, and when I, I love to swim, and I'm not very good, um, but I do it for close to an hour whenever I, I go, and usually I go three or four times a week. And some of the times I swim with a friend, and we both side stroke, and we chat. And it's a wonderful time to catch up, and we're doing something healthy. And, you know, so again, think creatively. Also think about when you're driving to work in the car of what you can do. One of the things you can do is breathe. All of us need to work on breathing. You know, and so just taking big breaths. Notice, you know, do you really get some movement down in your belly or are you just all tight and you don't get any movement except right here? So just say, yeah, I'm gonna drive to work and I'm gonna practice my breathing. You know, take some big breaths and it's relaxing. You know, and another thing that you can do, um, you know, that, that, that's so incredible is, you know, we become numb to our surroundings and we don't even know what's going on. You know, we drive to work and somebody says, hey, did you see that new building going up on 83? Mm -hmm. And you go, huh? Oh. And, you know, and so you can also play some games just to increase your awareness of, you know, what's going around. And <clears throat> I play games of sometimes looking at all the different shades of green that I see. And I love to do this in the spring and just see how it uh, you know, emerges. Or I play a game, I'm gonna look for red on the sides of the road. Now I live in the country, so it's not like I'm bombarded with color like you are, um, you know, if you're, you're, you're in the city. But, you know, use that uh, time in the car. And there's some muscle co-contractions you can do in relaxations as you're driving um, that, you know, you still can be attending well, but, you know, make use of those times. So, what I'd like you to do, and we really don't have, have time right now to do it, but you've got the form. What I'd like you to do is make a commitment that I'm going to start my own personal wellness program today, 9.30, February 14th. You can remember this day. You can say for generations to come. February 14th, Valentine's Day 2008 was a turning point in my life. And up here I have identified who your team is going to be. And I put three different kinds of people, and they could be all the same. But I think for myself, I find I've got to have a confidant. I have to say to somebody, I have to have somebody that I can say, you know, I ate a half a carton of Ben and Jerry's last night. <laughs> now, I can't say that. I've, I've got three people that are on my floor that are these three people. I can't say that to the one who's 98, 98 pounds. You know, she just doesn't quite get it. But my boss, who's a big guy, um, and he also is working, striving hard to um, be healthy. He understands eating a half a carton of Ben and Jerry's. And he'll also tell me, and I hope you're back on track now, and I need that. The motivator. You know, somebody's going to say, come on, you know, don't go those elevators. You can do the steps one more time. I know you've gone up six flights four times today, but you've only got one more meeting. So, um, and then, you know, the doer. Who will do those things with you? Who will go up and down the stairs or whatever? Um, so get your team. Have some fun with it. And then decide your own personal things that you're going to do. And you can choose this from your choice forms.
Um, and what I put down at, at the bottom is a quote from Rumi, who is a <clears throat> poet from many, many years ago. And you know, what I love about this, this, um, this is he says, you know, <clears throat> no matter how many times you've broken your vow, how many times you've eaten that Ben and Jerry's ice cream or those cookies? Come again and again and again. So it doesn't matter, but just get back on track. So, ending talks. We can all create our own plans for reading while well listening to workplace. Set some goals. Have a support team. Acknowledge that we will all fail now and again, but start again immediately. Not tomorrow, not Monday, but immediately. Find out what resources you have here at UMBC and which ones are good fits for you. And have a heart-healthy Valentine's Day. And let this Valentine's Day, February 14, 2008, be your start to creating your own personal wellness program in the workplace. Thank you for your listening.